Why is it that we suffer despite relentless spiritual practice? Although we can have these profound awakenings, go on meditation retreats, our intuitions sometimes still tell us that despite this and despite perhaps radical insights and shifts into the nature of identity and reality as we know it, there is something that still needs to be integrated in the body. Recently, I just sat down with a beautiful woman called Alina, who took it upon herself to have a conversation with me just out of spontaneity. We connected through a YouTube comment. If you're wondering who Alina is, she is a certified killer bee inquiries facilitator and is a leader in the space of essentially integrating these profound wisdom teachings, but connecting them to the body and acknowledging the fact that yes, we do have trauma and yes, we can work with it. And yes, they are compatible. She leads groups and is has had a profound path herself, having gone from trauma, not being able to speak or share her voice with others to now demonstrating just by sheer what, what she does is she can speak in front of people and teach people and is very passionate about bringing awakening and these insights into the heart, into the body and bringing them out into daily life. We talk about the apparent body mind split, working with the sense of self in order to dissolve the sense of self, saying yes to life and how actually these profound teachings can sometimes be co-opted by the ego and used as ways to bypass life. We talk about how we can begin to learn to trust the body and our deep innate instincts and finish up with some incredibly important mindset shifts that every spiritual seeker or every person looking to embody and actualize their awakening or insights into daily life can use to orient effectively. And I know this one will be of huge value to you as it was for me speaking with Alina. You can find her links in the description. And as always, there are timestamps in the um, video scroll bar as well. So feel free to jump around if something leaps out to you. Otherwise, enjoy. Yeah, it's lovely to be here with you. Um, yeah, it's super special. I, just to connect, I, I left a comment on one of your videos and you're a, a wonderful Kilby inquiry facilitator, which is essentially a somatic modality um, that really brings in an orientation and I guess a appreciation for the fundamental truth of who we are and why we're here, but also acknowledging that the body holds trauma. It holds conditioning and patterns and things of this nature that no matter how awake we are, we still have emotions. And Alina, basically you've taken it upon yourself to become certified in this modality and help people and coach people to essentially dive right into the thick of those patterns and understand what they are and um, basically love them into release or um, just be go right into the depths of the psyche and so um, that I'm, I'm all about it and I, I love I love that so much you know all that I really care about is authenticity and this heart's yearning is for authenticity and connecting to um, like-minded people of that nature so yeah, such a gift to reach out spontaneously. I saw one of your videos and left a comment and you're like, hey, let's catch up for a um, conversation. I'm like, why the hell not? Let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> hey, look at it. Hey, look at you. You're so beautiful with this smile. So yeah, it's, it's <laughs> um, yeah. yeah. Thank so, you so much. Uh, yeah, yeah. Nice to be here. Thanks for the spontaneity. And it's always lovely to connect exactly with the same resonance. And I just saw a couple of your videos. I'm like, oh my gosh, finally, you know, more people <laughs> are doing this, more people are sharing, more people are authentic, you know, which is like really digging deeper and not avoiding being human, basically. Right. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And um, I, th I think uh, I had a quick read of your bio as well on your your website that you've done. Up. By the way, you're a, you used to be a graphic designer, didn't you? So you were quite creative. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I'd imagine you had a input into that. It looks it's gorgeous, the the banner and the yeah. yeah. <laughs> so yeah, it's done really well. Yeah, it was fun. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I do a bit of web design too, so I I admired that as well. So anyway. Um yeah, and I, I had a little bit of a read of your about page and you know, you've been on the psycho spiritual journey for quite a while. And if you if you want to call it that, but there's so many names and labels. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I think one thing you I really related to when I was reading that was your um, 
and and I feel, I feel like we can just go straight into it because the, the container of the, these sorts of conversations is rooted in authenticity and I already feel that having spoken to you just before we started recording uh yeah and I think one of the things that stood out to me that I related to was the the difficulty sharing your voice with other people even though you had a profound realization at a young age or, at, or earlier on not at a young age but yeah there still was a sense that the body has trauma there's, there's an intuitive knowing that there's things to look at and my voice needs like my heart's yearning is to share with people and to help people and yeah. but I but yet I still feel limited in yeah. my capacity to um, show up in the world to teach people even though that's what I, I feel like this body mind is leaning toward yeah so I don't know I, I wonder if you could riff off that a little bit and speak to what that's been like for you and yeah for uh, sure yeah. thanks so much Sam and anyway it's uh it's an honor to be here um wow yeah the journey mm. so first of all you know it's interesting that we start seeking from probably the most intense point in our life where like suffering gets super saturated so in my case it was i was 27 and i was really i would say mm, exhausted in looking for peace and intimacy with people through drugs and alcohol and that's mm -hmm. what was happening and i kind of um just burned my capacity to be able to do that there was just my body couldn't recover for some time so it was a, a serious point of kind of to to my um internal process of kind of no return no return so what i mean by that is that uh, there was this needing to know that there is another reality than the trauma and the trying to fix it or to patch it up with mm -hmm. just, let's say, in my case, that social anxiety, that inability to connect with people was, okay, I'll smoke and I'll be okay. I'll, mm -hmm. And I'll drink and I can connect. So it was just really addressing that um, inability, that, that, that intense resistance and intense repressed shame that I didn't even know about existed within me and in a lot of repressed fear and a lot of repressed anger that was there eventually that I found mm, was all yes. preventing me connecting with people so on one hand I'm, I'm tremendously grateful because it embarked me on a journey of, of really looking for okay what else is here what, what's truly real and and yoga started coming my way in different different modalities and very intuitive at some point because it was like okay there's there's some remembrance here that there's much more than this than just the shallowness of suffering mm. so um so that brought me to intense kind of practice and being on the cushion and and really immediately quitting everything not because i had to but the drive and the earnestness was just so strong that I quit drinking and smoking and partying and all that stuff. You knew that uh, there were distractions that are deep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah, really yeah. fully, fully, fully focused. And um, it, it was really, it started bringing fruits almost immediately, just in meditation, started to really focus training, the one, uh, being one pointed with specifically in my case with sound. And then eventually I was initiated into Himalayan yoga tradition and I was given a mantra and it was the same kind of meditation, but, but it was like really focusing on an inner seed mantra. So it was really one pointed, one pointed, which was, which is interesting to understand, you know, we, in the Western world, like we just hear wonderful, how would I say pointers? And we're like, okay, we want it like immediately. But we just don't understand that our body, the whole capacity of even sitting still and being present, is it's like it's not even there. We really have to make it a possibility. Like we really have to mm. practice and train and nervous system regulate and be able to, you know, like all these yogis, you know, they they're, they were masters of they're scientists of of this body mechanism, right? That mm. that developed all these wonderful techniques. 
So it was really, yeah. really useful. I, I feel like a lot of people, sorry to yeah. cut you off, but I feel like a lot of people separate the mind from the body <sighs> without co combining the two into one harmonious sort of vehicle in a way that you're, that you can use to realize fundamental truths. Yeah. So I know from my experience, having like sat, um, and I relate to a lot of what you said, by the way, and I, I can riff off a couple of things that you said uh, with yeah. your earlier conditioning that led to uh, when you were 27, but um, <clears throat> specifically doing Vipassana meditation retreats, for instance, I know they're, they're very popular portal of entry for people who intuit and suspect that there is something very deep and profound that they can relinquish and that they know that basically all of their suffering that they're experiencing is an internal jig. Um, but yet there may be an under appreciation for regulating the nervous system at the same time. So you can go right into the thick of these 10 day retreats and meditate and meditate and meditate 10 hours a day. And then all of a sudden you, you, you know, people often describe a, explosive experience or a, a clarity, a, a feeling of clarity leaving those retreats, but then all of a sudden they're thrown into this intense emotional repression and things resurfacing. And there's a period of what the hell just happened to me and um, trying to make sense of, and you know, like what, and, and you're told by the teacher to, just just keep observing as it is just keep observing as it is and meanwhile you're, you're dealing with repressed rage that you have no context for or repressed angst probably probably just more grossly would surface as angst as it did for me and uh things of that nature yeah 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 so I can yeah still... just like i like what you said about it how it was a science for them for for these yogis that there was an appreciation of not just the mind but also the body yeah yeah but, and you realize that yeah Mm -hmm. yeah the whole body mind connection i mean it was yoga is the merging right of body mind spirit so mm. um and it's quite um quite true what you're mentioning because i have actually a direct experience of a friend who did a vipassana and he had an amazing amazing experience and he really dived deep into it and had such a tremendous opening you know on whatever almost towards the end of his days there and it's like, wow, I really understood it. And there was mm. so much opening and all of a sudden all this flood of like unprocessed stuff. And basically instead of continuing Vipassana, what he finds himself is like literally drinking. Well, I mean, I'm coming from um, mm. USSR and Russian tradition and, and, and people mm. drink a lot. So he went into complete bouncing back into alcoholism and drank and drank like crazy himself to a point where we're looking for him. Like, hey, what's going on? What's going on? It's like I couldn't bear the, the the intensity of what was arising for me, and he didn't know what to do. And meditation was not enough to just observe. Yeah, um, a lot of my older videos, uh, when I was like really doing a lot of editing and stuff like that, were geared around um, when I was actually in that phase. And mm -hmm. it's uh, it, it was remarkable, speaking from my direct experience as well, how challenging that really can be. Um, just drawing back to how you were talking about your social anxiety. Uh, yeah. and how you were distracting yourself my modality of distraction <laughs> choose mm. your choose your character yeah. mine was uh video games uh in this modern mm. world and you know i'd play up to upwards to like 10 hours a day because i was never i was never taught how to emotionally regulate and i was never given context for what was happening to me and yet there was an intuition to turn inward and to meditate and to go really deep into the core mechanics of what causes suffering you know craving down to craving and aversion and um yeah so playing video games was definitely my my release but oh my god the, the capacity to um to distract yourself runs really deep and then all the while you're doing that you're pushing everything down everything is being it's all up you all up in your head and it's yeah it's this and it's so clear to see now, but in that time, I had no idea what was happening, right? So, and then when you go to these retreats and you you open up consciousness a little bit more by um, actually allowing, um, mm -hmm. there's a reason the body-mind repress this stuff. <laughs> and all of the old conditioning and habituated 
movements of mind are still in full force and full operation that basically say things like, I don't want to feel this. I hate it. Get it away. Um, I, I can't show anger. I can't show sadness or whatever these little commands that are connected to our bodies will say. And then we're trying to blanket this, um, this very wise advice from people like the teacher, as Goenka might say of just witness it as it is, as mm -hmm. it is not as you would like it to be. Mm -hmm. And then, but you're still overlooking the core mechanics and, uh, I guess like commands of, of the body uh, and, and what it feels like to me is it's sort of, you're blanketing over it without actually going right into it yeah. and feeling and expressing, which can lead to some profound awakenings and uh, re realizations of we're not what we take ourselves to be. And yet the, the narcissistic tendencies or the anger oppression or the angst and mm. all the mechanics that are running underneath oh. are still operating in full force <laughs> yeah. Yeah. and they come up. Yeah. 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 And yeah. it can be very disorienting and scary and feelings of helplessness. And, mm -hmm. but you want to commit yourself to that path because you still intuit there's something there, but yeah. it's like, you can almost form this identity around that as well. Yeah. Um, and yeah. And that kind of brings me back, you know, to exactly that, the, and the revelation and the, what I've found in meditation through all these practices I think the useful part of starting not from non-duality, how people are so drawn to right now and just the concepts of that. And some, sometimes in, in retreats, like big moments of spaciousness, but then their nervous system is not ready. So I think what was really, really useful is like actually doing the yoga, doing the asanas, doing the breathing, doing the meditation mm -hmm. and doing all these kriyas that and constantly, I was like constantly living with the mantra. So I'm always like overriding the noise in my head. So, um, so what started to happen um, is more of an organic progression towards non-duality. Mm. So I didn't understand reading Ramana's books in the beginning. I'm like, oh, that doesn't speak to me. I have no idea what he's talking about. Well, how can you realize through in the intellect, the jnana yoga and stuff like that. So it was not resonating, but then towards the progression and the body kind of changing and the energetics in my body was changing and the capacity to be present was like much more available. These kind of readings and some, some of the Nisargadatta, I am that, and some of the classics they were like, you don't need to read too much. And it's like, everything is so ready for mm. that realization that you read just a few lines and like, and you just feel it and it's just like right there it's it's so yeah. alive it's not dead the i book know exactly what dead. you mean yeah you can yeah. get so bound up and i speak from direct experience you can get so bound up in the, the one term you could use as vasanas like which are mental fixations or the emotional turbulence of the mind that it literally feels like a storm and you're trying to apply these deep wisdom teachings. And as you say, they bounce right off because you're caught in the storm, basically. And little, sure, there's little small windows and um, breaks through the clouds of the turbulence of it. But And you might get bits and pieces, but an appreciation and um, integration of the body sense. And I, again, I speak from experience. is It's been hugely transformative for me because I, I for so many years, I was just, you know, sitting in my room, meditating. And I would have clarity and some degree of peace within the meditation sit and observing sensations. And then I would get up and, okay, now let's go about my relative life and holy shit, you know, boom, boom, <laughs> boom. And like I was working as a cardiac technician, mm -hmm. uh, having graduated university for a period of time and going into the workplace with this now acquired heightened sensitivity because I was reconnecting to the body but still be dealing with immense emotional repression and challenging stuff. Uh, wow. <laughs> it's not, it was not a fun time in my life. I would argue it was probably the most challenging time of my life in my early twenties, like 23, 24, 22, 23, 24, uh, where that was really um, yeah. coming in full force and yeah. bringing it back the actually implementing and acknowledging and trusting my gut instinct that, which was hard to break away from that identity of the person who was like the meditator who couldn't engage the story, the thoughts or the narrative of Sam, because if I were to do that, that would be like delusion or something. And my mind was really attached to the idea of like, 
no, I've got to, I've got to uproot the the broken story of Sam through, you know, almost a pure Dependence. detachment. Yeah. 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 So yeah. yeah, but I noticed, um, as soon as I was able to actually work with these modalities and bring it in and actually like start addressing things like anger repression or, um, the capacity to express anger or like fear of rejection and all these sorts of things that we, that this sort of work, um, invites us to do with kill the inquiries or like what you teach, what you coach people on or somatic modalities. Uh, it, it really can calm the storm enough to be uh, open this body mind, the aperture of the body mind to be like receptive to insight and profound insight that mm -hmm. actually you can take out and integrate into the world and, you know, show up which is evident by you being here and me being here because like old Sam or, you know, like emotionally repressed Sam would be fucking terrified to speak with somebody or, and still is to, to some degree, you know, like before this conversation, there's nervousness, there's fear, but it's like, there's, it's okay because I know what it's trying to do. It's trying to protect, it's trying to help, it's trying to save. And, um, yeah. And there's always more yeah. work to do for sure. But, yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> always. I spoke a lot, I spoke a lot there, but I don't know if there's anything you, that stands out. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, the, what, what I was listening to you and was interesting. It's the years you were talking about how difficult it was. Mm -hmm. and, and it's interesting. It's that contrast, right. Of like transcending on the cushion, but mm -hmm. then when it comes to the relative terms of being in the world, it's like, what is this? This is what I'm trying to transcend from. <laughs> How do I deal with this? Yes, so um, yes. it's it's quite fascinating that even though let's say transcendence did arrive to its final stage, so to say, like knowing what I am and being established in that after years of meditation and seeking, but like not seeking for the sake of safety but actually seeking from the sense of deep earnestness to know the truth and nothing but truth. And it's mm -hmm. very, very different. So it did arrive because if we're earnest enough and we're demanding life to for truth and nothing but that, and while we're actually taking the steps, it has no other choice but to come forth as the answer, you know, to really move in. So, mm -hmm. but the, the interesting part of that is that does not, yes, there's a lot of the, the judgment, the noise, there's so much quiet, there's so much spaciousness, and yet, and yet, that contrast of what I was running away from as life itself, a related life itself, being in social settings, relating to people, I was back in it, and now mm -hmm. I had no idea how to mm -hmm. deal with it, even more so, because mm -hmm. now I register in awareness so I was literally <laughs> hanging around in awareness for two years. And it was just like, I'm staying here. <laughs> I was like, can you, and can you speak to that? Can, can you speak to what that felt like? What, did it feel yeah. like it was relief or did, was there an intuition that there was some relief and there was still some sort of mm -hmm. um, acknowledgement that this isn't quite right or something like that? Yeah. Yeah. It was like everything you're saying. So there was, yeah. there was a natural process of having no idea how to move in the world from mm. a different place where it's no longer in time frame. What can I get of this out of this? Or, you know, trying to, I mean, unconsciously it was still happening. Like the, 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 try, the needing to hide and the unlovable self was still continuing, but, but awareness is not conscious everyday awareness is not aware of the unconscious stuff. Mm -hmm. Not until it's kind of sabotages it through actual life experiences and then stuff arises and then like, oh, okay, I see. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. the beauty of the work, which we're going to come back to, is just because we're prompting, we don't need to wait for life to do itself. It's living. We just need, we can clear it up before we get out and do the living thing. So mm -hmm. it was just really, well, right? yeah. sorry, yeah. go ahead. <laughs> sorry to interject yeah. or, or in tandem like life is um can trigger the hell out of you right yeah. but if you if you have the the tools that you're in in your tool belt at your disposal what a yeah. gift it can become this beautiful like exploration in daily life of oh wow that person was really you know opened me up and i felt really relaxed but this person um whoa you know like I, I felt like i couldn't look at them in the eyes for more than two seconds and uh, or i'm feeling all this 
<laughs> of the mind and like what's what's that you know wow <laughs> what's that about yeah. it's just this curiosity and fascination um that can really unfold when those tools are uh, when you know how to work mm. with that you know mm-hmm. in, in a way that honors the the divine you know presence of what we really are but also like acknowledges that there is some integration and waking up and cleaning up that we that we really can do yeah and it's very profound what you're saying. I'm going to come back to the awareness but in, in a mm-hmm. second, but I just yeah. want to reflect on what you're saying. It's that um, and, and I'm always talking about it. The beauty of KI or this kind of work is, is not hiding anymore from life, but actually saying yes to life. And that's how I got out from being stuck in awareness is just mm-hmm. saying yes to life. And when we say yes to life, life starts, you know, we we just start living and they'll start living brings relationships and life is all about relationships to ourselves, to the present moment, to, to the environment, to the other person. It's just this constant relating that's happening. Mm -hmm. And in this relating, right, there is, they're constantly mirroring. So having these tools now, this is like a whole other kind of living because if, if we just use the tools and we don't do the living, then nothing's really happening and i see a lot of people doing ki and they think that somehow life will come and get them but no you have to these are the tools that you take with you and you go living because living will bring you the feedback and the reflection what needs to be looked at and now you have all the toolkit how to deal with it how to look at it how to immediately see what's the unconscious material and so on so it's just growth and growth and deepening and deepening as as you live so it's it's really amazing it's really right exactly and what stood out to me there is a subtle um, mindset shift that you alluded to that's been very helpful for me is although i wouldn't have had the words for it i think at the time uh especially when i was in the thick of deep meditation but i was really holding out that i would sort of perfect this self And I needed to do that and wake up to a certain degree or like realize a certain degree of like, you know, anatta or um, total absorption in awareness before I could, my life could truly begin. Yeah. But it's like, no, you can really let life wake you up, but there has to be this like subtle shift of perspective of perception. I think it, and it's, it's something like this. It's like, I know that the human condition is brutal you know like there is suffering and that's that's what we're given but can i open and relax my body mind and allow that allow that suffering in so fully and love it like love the almost like forgotten children that i've pushed away that everybody not just you your whole of humanity is pushed away until this very moment And yes, it's going to be, I'm going to feel like I want to jump out of my skin if I go to a certain like, you know, Christmas with my family or some shit. (laughs) Like, good luck with that, right? But you're going to feel it. You're going to feel everything. Um, But it's like, how much can you let in and not try to uphold this spiritual persona that you're the one who isn't affected by anything in life or these identities and, you know, you're wearing all the beads and the chakras and uh, and all that. But... (laughs) can you let that go and just connect to your raw authentic humanity and act um and and i think what that precipitates when we orient in that way is like is love it's a natural love for humans and a a love for for yourself like yourself but yeah um for this expression yeah Mm. yeah beautifully said it's so true and that's what kind of being stuck in awareness i was literally the other part mm-hmm. was that I was begging full return mm-hmm. and I was literally begging life for, to know what That's love really, is because yeah. it was really, really dry. It was disconnected from life and disconnected from the human heart because here was very quiet, but it was almost like a, an intense fear to go below and just mm-hmm. really land here and say yes to life yeah Um, to drop into the tight gut feeling that you've been avoiding your whole life and you've been trying to you know rest as awareness to actually get away from or meditate in vipassana meditation to to hopefully transmute and eradicate from this body mind or something Mm -hmm. 
Mm. Yeah, and I think was that what what really helped in that moment it was uh, the birth of my second son, and it was a a very beautiful home birth, and it was ecstatic birth, and it was just like this marvelous yeah, thing that probably second to as taking experiences as experiences go after the whole inner shift and the spiritual awakening and the honeymoon. And that was probably the most other profound experience kind of, whereas one was like the, the, the openness and the consciousness, like infinite, like infinite consciousness. And this was this raw power of the manifest. It was wow. just like this. Yeah. Amazing. Uh, so really so amazing. So ecstatic. I literally like, used to do MDMA, nothing come close to <laughs> how much oxytocin and how much, how much. Wow. Uh, yeah. I, I say to my, I, I say to my partner that I'm actually kind of jealous that, um, women get to experience this profound transcendental experience of childbirth. And I'm, I'm so grateful and happy for you that you got to experience that just with your husband at home without having medical doctors, you know, tell you how you should give birth to this child and, using the clamps and trying to get you to have a C-section, but you were able to experience this transcendental, beautiful experience within the confines of your own like castle. And I think, I believe you, I remember reading, you said you had a midwife come out yeah, as well. Yeah. She yeah. was late. <laughs> yeah. Was yeah, late. yeah. Wow. Uh, yeah. Maybe that's um, it had to be like that. Right. And yeah. Uh, I think, you know what, it's, it's not as simple as that. What, what is needed is coming back again to this deprogramming because mm even kind of touching a little bit on, I did become a doula later on just because, wow, I want to help women to experience this, but it mm. was deprogramming the fear and deprogramming this intense collective idea that birth is unnatural and we need to, it's an emergency. We need to save the mm. mother and the baby. And it's just like, la, 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 la. It's like all these things. And then when we start really digging into how humanity was birthed, I mean, it was just this, simple, natural thing that women were able to do because the blueprint yeah. is right there. We all carry it as women. Yes. Yes. So deconditioning. Can, yeah. Yeah. Was very, very important. Yeah. You're right. So you're touching on the fact that it, there's this systemic humanity thing that is sort of like, um, maybe like control or whatever. And yeah, it, it can be really harmful to um, that when you're not honoring that divine feminine quality that your body is fully capable of doing this amazing thing that is is truly you know it, it occurred to me the other day that um in a way i had a pretty profound um integration piece that occurred when i was feeling at, like absolutely devastated by sickness and illness mm -hmm. like uh i had the flu basically and you know the sort of bone achy flu where you can't move in bed and even rolling over is an issue mm -hmm. and this was just before easter um, but what that does, these sorts of in very intense, natural bodily experiences that we can experience when we don't have the medical system or, you know, and, and the medical system is wonderful in many respects, but the, you know, like, thank God for it, but also just the nature of how it's um, formulated itself. Um, I, I could so easily medicate that away or, you know, take Panadol, which I did, <laughs> but, um, or take paracetamol. Uh, but I noticed in that very intense experience, it brought me so deeply into my body that there was no escape from this, this feeling of ach achiness, like absolute, just, you know, agony uh, of, you know, and, and I, I might be upselling it a bit, but the, um, but the, the invitation that brought in that brought me so deeply into the body was to, it was almost like things became more accessible and it put things into perspective a lot more easily when um, the naturalness of life is allowed to be uh, rather than to be suppressed or controlled in whatever way that looks like. So it could be childbirth, could be sickness, could be, could be anything, the death of a loved one of like your, oh my gosh. Yeah. Yeah. And just letting that in so fully. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Very profound. And that's really understanding kind of connecting to mm, so two things, well, quite a few things, of course, I've learned from that experience and the birth and how it opened up to more what I call love in action, you know, just kind of like what what God really is, is love in action and coming mm -hmm. more to KI. And I'm just going to get in a moment with that. But mm -hmm. the birth experience is just, 
it it was just that same formula. It's the the trust, right? In the process, it was so, so, so important. It's complete letting go, complete trusting. And it was also this attunement in intuitive way of really listening to the body. The body has everything. It's such an intelligent, it's an mm. it's the intelligence, you know, and it knows what to do, exactly what to do. And, and if we just learn how to really listen and mm. just kind of learn the other missing languages. So we're just worshiping intellect so much that we forgot about intuition, right? And the instinct that you were talking about. So mm. the gut language, the heart language, and it's very, very important. So when we really tap to that, that the birth is so connected to instinct, the birth is so connected to in intuition. And even yeah. talking about trust, it doesn't even apply there when we fully land into that realm. Mm. And, and it's just the beauty that comes out of it. We are a walking pharmacy. You know, mm -hmm. talking about medical stuff, you know, there was opiates that were minimizing the pain. I mean, there was also water. I was giving birth in water. So if suspending in water really, really helps, maybe 50% removes the intensity. And, and just this deep deprogramming, I watched videos and videos of unassisted birth on YouTube, literally seeing how mothers do it. They're just going in the middle of the kitchen. They're just squatting and then just get that baby out. I'm like, wow. Oh, this yeah, is yeah. so fascinating compared to what we're programmed to believe birth is about. Yeah, yeah absolutely. So it's the programming, it's the trust, is the connection to our bodies fully, fully, fully. Yeah. Our bodies. Can you? Uh, I think what what really stood out to me there is the the trust, like yeah. the very intellectual mind who's maybe read a lot of books and is on the spiritual path and they're really trying to make awakening happen and they're really trying to wake up more deeply, which is, which is this amazing commitment and yearning for truth in one respect, but there's also, it overlooks, it, it can overlook this, this trust aspect for sure. And I know for me making actually being on both polarities, being having experienced that and shifting toward trusting, trusting the body. Like we'll speak to the, speak to that for a second is, like how the body essentially is connected to the mind. And when we can feel a sensation, let's say a tightness in the gut that's been there our whole lives, and we can just get curious with this loving curiosity and like, wow, you know, what, what is this? And then our mind will, you know, try and jump in. If we're very intellectual and be like, Oh, this is from my childhood trauma I had. This is when I was like six years old, but it's like, no, what, what, what is this? And then let the body speak, trust the body. Let it tell you that it, I don't know, whatever it is, I'm scared. I don't want to do it today. I hate this. And then, you know, like, Oh, you know, I hate this. And you really have to trust that is a hard transition to make. If you're very intellectual and this is the beauty that people like you bring, I think that there's this very divine feminine quality that, invites people uh to to go there and to develop that trust just by sheer nature of your presence and i, I can feel it when i talk to you too it's mm. amazing but um yeah i think a lot of people who have very masculine oriented meaning very practice driven very pragmatic very this very that science is the only way or like and that's that's a very very much hard distortion but there's an invitation there that maybe there's a more feminine quality that you could really lean into, which isn't going to actually deaccelerate the process or anything, but it's going to connect you and bring you into life more and with an open heart and a willingness to engage rather than um, hiding away, you know? Yeah. Yeah. That's definitely a beautiful reminder and, and trust. Yeah. Wow. And it's not that simple. You know, I'm working with people and, Sometimes we just need to start even with that, working mm. on trust, the inability to mm. trust, because as trauma goes, not every one of us had the ability to practice trusting, trusting life, trusting people, mm, and actually the other way around. So there's a lot going on, not just not just being an intellectual, but it's also the the program that might be running very, very deep. And this inability to trust if and if I can 
bring it about and we can really, really look at it and really disconnect everything and all the stories that it's connected to and start kind of inviting our nervous system to get to know while the mistrust is up here and I feel it, like I don't necessarily, I also have space and I don't necessarily need to act from it, but be a bit more spacious with it in my environment, this mistrust, right? And then from there, when we actually really learn to be with mistrust in our system, okay, hey, mistrust, nice to see you. You're here again. I mean, through sessions, of of course, we'll connect it to the origin of the story and you will feel in the body again, coming back to the body. And of course, with the right guidance, you start learning that you're not making it up. You just start learning and you're with that, you start trusting a little bit more, at least the process Mm. of the session and a little bit more. And then in this, a little bit more that might start showing up in the external world as well as a reflection of your new gained trust over and over again and and of course as a facilitator i would make sure that i'm they're paying attention to even the smallest of things because it's very important yes it's very easy to to go down into the shadow which can be very scary if you've never done it before like I, i can recall my first session with michael for instance when i caught up with him he taught me these sorts of techniques um there was a willingness to, to go there uh, and to go deep. But there was also part of me that did not want to be seen. And, oh, there's certain parts, if I reveal that to Michael, you know, I'm a fraud, I'm an imposter, I can't do, no way I'm revealing that. So it's a very delicate process that starts in the, really in the laboratory of your mind in, in the safety of your home. And then that I love how you said that that starts to permeate basically outward into the world. And that's so true. And I can very much relate to that in my experience where uh, where maybe like say there was a certain situation that you you weren't open to, but then you realize that you, you've developed this relationship of trust with your own body, with your own body mind. And it's like, you know what? I've got this. And it has this heartful quality to it as well. Like I, I can handle it. I can do it. And um, yeah. yeah, meeting people where they're at too is so critical, you know, like, If someone doesn't even want to go two inches into the shadow, then, okay, let's, let's look at that. You know, like what, what is the peripheral beliefs and surrounding architecture that has kept you safe up until this point, you know, let's see that for what it is and just take it slow. And we don't need to um, go from zero to a thousand (laughs) in one, one day, but yeah. 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 Kind of just, brings me back to that recognition and realization that even after you know we can be established in non-dual realization and being really really present uh there's still all these traumas that need to be addressed and as you were mentioning in the beginning uh, my inability to share the, the realization although people used to come you know, in the beginning when this whole shift was happening and literally they're all just falling samadhi together, like it would just disappear into presence. And there was just many months of that. And then it's just, of course, things you can't live like that. Life comes back to the much more ordinary (laughs) kind of version of that. Mm -hmm, Um, mm -hmm. But there was so much I wanted to share and I couldn't. And Mm -hmm. what I started to find, um, I didn't have the tools back then and what, but what I started to find, I, well, it kind of life presents those challenges and I was, uh, doing a permaculture course and I was supposed to present. I was, I really enjoyed doing the whole course and everything. And, uh, I was supposed to present in front of people. Mm. And already was challenging to be surrounded by people. So I was kind of always <laughs> going away somewhere, hanging around in the forest as opposed to in the group. Mm-hmm. But um, but with that, there was something very interesting that happened. It was just this inability to speak that really started to so choke me. Mm-hmm. And it was also a, like another language. I had to present it in French as opposed to English because I was living in Quebec. Mm-hmm. And uh, 
And anyway, what I've heard, it was kind of interesting because awareness was already here for like maybe a good two years or so, just really established. And what I've heard, like just intense presence to a cry of a child. It was not a woman, whatever I was at back then, like a third, 31, 32. I was like, it was not a woman crying. And I literally I could, couldn't stand it. I ran into the forest and I just literally begged life. I'm like, what is this? I was the, that, well, that was my first inquiry. I just screamed into the forest. What is this? Wow. And like <laughs> images and images of. And you really wanted to know. You yeah, really wanted to yeah, know. Really yeah, really wanted to know. Yeah. Because I had no, I, I, like, I couldn't, like, I, it was familiar. I knew things like that happened, but to such degree where I was so paralyzed and not able to do anything or talk. And what started to happen, I started, what uncovered is images that I haven't seen for 30 years, literally 30 years. It was completely wow. repressed out of my memory, out of my system, gone. And it was right. a lot, it's a very, very shameful, intensely shameful event that happened to me when I was six years old in yeah. a sleepaway camp in USSR. Anyway, and it was just like, bah, 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 like, wow. And yeah, all so there was a, there was a girl, cauldron. Girl, mm, Six-year-old girl crying, literally yeah. crying. It was, uh, it was a very, very powerful experience. Wow. Did I know yeah. what else to do with it? I had no idea what to do with it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And there is a way that you can work with it too, right? So Yeah, for yeah, sure. It's so beautiful that you life basically gave you the ingredients to for bootstrap you to trust so deeply and to actually trust your body. And then boom, it was right there for you when you when you opened and were receptive yeah. to see what that's actually what, what that's about, even with all the realization and yeah, everything. And then there was a yeah. Yeah, what a and cathartic process. Yeah, exactly. Beautiful. And that brought me slowly, slowly to Scott's work, because mm. even though with awareness and, you know, I mean, I had also young kids, one was born and then another one was born. And it was just, I had no time or capacity to really just sit down and just really bring it into a modality, so to say. Yes, mm -hmm. awareness was here, but it was not enough. Mm -hmm. One life will bring it about again. Yes, there was again the PTSD, and and then my, of course the beautiful mistakes I've learned from. It was just I unconsciously identified. It was so shocking that story. So I unconsciously identified as a new label. Oh, this happened to me. Mm -hmm. This is my story. Mm -hmm. And everyone I was, uh, my friends or whoever was talking to, it was like. Yeah, I'm, 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 I'm so close to share my truth and realization. You know, I'm working on it. I'm working on this issue and look what I found. And, and it was, I was kind of excited about it, but I didn't understand what I was doing. And yeah. kind of in the process of always coming back to, this is the story and this is what happened. I was actually reinforcing and reinforcing it over and over again, instead of just really meeting it raw and not resisting. And the other part is the other mistake that I started to notice. And like, hmm, every time it shows up, I'm like, I hated being here already. I thought I worked on it already. I, I wanted to, I wanted gone out of my system. Ah, uh, yes, yes. So That's like you want to of... cleave it out and get rid of it so it never enters this body mind again. Yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's a that's a very important point. I think is there's a subtle orientation that I've noticed in my experience because it's so delicious to want to do that. You're like, oh, here's that here's that program again. Yes, okay, let me use this tool to get rid of it and get like banish it from the existence. But it's not like that, is it? It's it's it has to be <laughs> yeah. this like letting in and just be like, oh wow, okay, you're here again. Hello. Yeah. yeah. You know, and that you can't fake that. <laughs> <laughs> the mind will try to for a while and then eventually you just realize it's not going anywhere and it's going to keep yeah. coming back so it's like you know maybe maybe you can tell someone that and they have to hear it 50 times before they realize that you know the human condition is just like this you know so yeah yeah, yeah. so it's, it's but it becomes so, so subtle right the subtlety yes. of it is on one hand there is this deep acknowledgement that that story had to have you know, oh my gosh, like, wow, thank you for arising, you know, like, I love you, you can stay here, right, as long as you like, one of the tools of KI, mm. but it was more like, 
thank you for arising. Wow, how interesting. Like, get out of, get, get the hell out of here. Get the hell out of here. <laughs> 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 yeah and that is so, it's so it can be so frustrating when you're trying to come at that intellectually so it really is this heartful orientation I, th I feel like and I don't know how to describe that other than it's this consistently seeing that you know what like yeah I really can't change this yeah and you've kept me safe like, this program has kept me safe like if I couldn't if you couldn't speak your voice and um yeah. Yeah. Well, as an example I'm not saying this was for you but if I could, if I can't speak and I've got this little six-year-old girl who is, she, she was humiliated when she, when she spoke, when she was a kid. So I better not speak again in that same way. And so otherwise I'll be humiliated, shamed, cast out, you know, so that that's there for a reason. And when it, when it can surface, it's like, wow, okay, I see you. And, and I use that as an example. And I don't mean to, um, yeah, you know, yeah, project sure. on what your story might have been, but yeah. Yeah, very powerful. So on mm. one end, it's like this radical acceptance that has to happen. And mm. on another end, this kind of subtlety of yes, acknowledgement and yes, gratitude. And yet, let me not wear it as my new coat, the victim me. Yeah. That's what happened yes. to me. So it's That's like exactly that subtlety right, yeah. too. Yeah. And you can put things in time as well. The mind will really try to put things in time, but there's a, I feel like you can really orient to just what's here now. Like there's only this mental image, this, this sensation right here, right yeah. now. It doesn't have to be me that I'm going to tell everybody about my spiritual story and how noble and spiritual warrior I am. And, <laughs> you know, I have this much trauma and, you know, play the victim, like you said, but it's like, um, yeah, just yeah. dealing with what, as it arises, as it arises. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. I'm... What brought me to KI at the end, it's like getting curious and finding Scott's work. And mm -hmm. um, it was really like, well, finally, someone actually speaking to my experience. And at least uh, there's already a modality and I don't need to reinvent it. The words mm -hmm. are already there. The tools are already there. Um, yeah, yeah. Well, it's really fascinated, fascinating with Scott's work for sure. Bought some books and started reading and started implementing, found so many things that I released within myself that was allowing me to share more and more and more. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. there was so many layers that there was a layer that I, I had to be perfect to be lovable. So I couldn't uh -huh. do videos or share or like create an event before, like I perfected my speech or what I'm going to say. <laughs> yes, exactly right. Like, yeah. A whole bundle uh, of things that is like packed into, I need to be perfect to be lovable. Right. Yeah. And I actually even felt into that pattern before speaking with you today. It's like, I need to know what to say or in the right moment and how to say it. Um, otherwise it will invalidate my voice or something like that. Right. It was just this little subtle thing I was feeling before speaking. And yeah, it's just these sorts, the sorts of patterns that you wish that you wish you could look at and, and that you initially, a lot of people I think want to go into spirituality for actually, they want to look at these things, but they think spirituality, like the past in a meditation or self-inquiry will be the vehicle to do it. But there's just an invitation I think to, while those, those, there's nothing wrong in their incredibly profound practices, but there's another invitation to come into the body as well. And those long lasting patterns that you feel like you could never have worked through um, can be worked through and they can be loved and seen for what they are. I think. Yeah. Yeah. They're profound and, and look what spontaneity brought about. <laughs> right. Yeah. So it, this has been lovely. Yeah. I think we could probably uh, wrap it up now, but yeah, yeah. yeah, Alina, thank you. Yeah, spontaneity, right? This is this isn't planned, isn't scripted. You reached out to me yesterday and two or two days ago, and here we are. And you know, like so, so amazing. Yeah, wonderful. <laughs> thank you so yeah, thank you so much for your time. I think a lot of people get a lot out of this conversation. So yeah, thank you so yeah. much as well. Yeah, um, yeah. yeah, wonderful to meet people along the way. You know, it's yeah, yeah.